Rolando, you need to click one more time for the music to start. Friends, this is Pastor Bart, uh, just letting you know that we're having a little bit of a technical issue with our audio, and so we're trying to work that out, um, and we will begin worship shortly. All right, Rolando, yeah, let's go ahead. Perfect. Let's go ahead and advance the slide there, Rolando. Thank you. And so, friends, this is, again, Pastor Bart. Um, let me unhide myself so you can see me. Um, and uh, welcome to worship at Madison Square Presbyterian Church. As I've already said a number of times, I'm Pastor Bart, and so glad to have you here with us this morning. Just a few announcements for the life of the church. Today is World Communion Sunday, and so I hope that you have been able to prepare uh, your um, prepare your elements of bread and juice. And um, sorry about that, uh, of bread and juice, and uh, we will share that uh, later on in the worship service. Um, now, if you forgot to do that, now is a great time to grab anything. And because it's World Communion Sunday, you can grab any kind of bread you want. And actually, on any given Sunday, we have communion. You may grab whatever kind of bread you want. Um, so uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, in the email updates the last couple of weeks, you should have seen different book study opportunities for adults. Uh, one is uh, Disunity in Christ, uh, which will be discussed on Wednesday nights. And um, the other is anxious to, anxious to talk about it, helping white Christians talk faithfully about racism, and that will begin next Sunday. Um, and so uh, if you would like to join in in those book discussions, please send me an email or a text letting me know. Uh, we will do that over Zoom and uh, uh, I think have fruitful conversation. I also, in the update this week, we provided some information uh, around finances for the church and CDC, but I also wanted to do it while we're in worship, because uh, a number of folks have asked about church finances. We're doing really well. Um, thank you for your generosity and your giving and continuous support of the church. I know some of you have had to change or even suspend some of your giving. Others uh, have started giving for the first time or have been able to increase. And so it really does take the whole community to support the ministries of Madison Square. And again, we give you thanks for that. Um, we, uh, according to our budget, 
actuals to budget, uh, as of the end of August, we're running about 97% in our giving, and that's really wonderful. Um, that is actually better than we've done in some years at this time in the year uh, through the summer. So um, if you're able, we, we graciously ask that you continue to give and are appreciative of that. Uh, the Children's Development Center, uh, Child Development Center, the CDC, which is our preschool at our church, which has been a long-standing mission of the church for well over 40 years, um, is suffering a little bit more. Their income streams primarily are from tuition, and we have made commitments through this pandemic to be as helpful as possible to our families. And so we're not charging tuition if they're not able to use the services for whatever reason of the CDC. Uh, after, once the pandemic started, we had to shut down just for essential workers only. Uh, we were able to care for kids of essential workers only. And so we only had about 12 students. And then after those restrictions have been lifted, we've been about, uh, we've had about 30 students enrolled. And that's about half of what we normally have. We can have a max of 60. And so our income has taken a hit, but, um, and at the same time, we've also had a strong commitment to our teachers and staff. And so we have not laid off any staff or had to get rid of any staff. And so our expenses remain about the same. Um, the good news is that we did get funds from the payroll protection program um, to help sustain their payroll for all of our employees for a few weeks, for six weeks. And then over the course of the last four years, we have built up a healthy cash reserve. And so we're able to weather this storm pretty well. It is likely that by the end of this year, our cash reserve will be depleted. Um, and we're not quite sure what enrollment will look like for 2021. Um, but we will balance all of our stewardship commitments along with our commitments to our staff um, and, and you know, move forward as faithfully as possible into the new year. For decades, the church supported the ministry uh, and mission of the preschool with financial, direct financial contributions sometimes in the tens of thousands of dollars. And so we may need to do that in 2021. And again, the session and stewardship and finance will uh, look at all of that uh, uh, as we progress through the year and into 2021. And so uh, thank you again for your generosity and support of this ministry. We really do appreciate it. And finally, uh, I know I've said this a number of times, um, but if you are not getting the weekly email updates and you would like to, that is announcements about what's going on in the life of the church along with links for worship, we'd be happy um, to send you um, uh, information. The, the, if you wanna sign on to that uh, email, just let us know either uh, an email to me or to the church office and we'll make sure that you get on that distribution list. Uh, I just saw a note come in from Pat Metcalf, uh, Pastor Mar uh, Marielis in uh, Placetas, Cuba. It's her birthday today, and so we will make sure that we celebrate that in the prayers as well, but how fitting that her birthday and our partnership with our church in Cuba, uh, that her birthday happens to be on World Communion Sunday. And I, I failed to mention on that note, you will see this morning different videos of different global partners for PCUSA as part of our liturgy this morning for World Communion Sunday. So you're gonna hear a few different languages uh, and see representations of the wider church this morning as we celebrate that. So now I invite you to take a deep breath, to be fully present and prepare yourselves to worship God. Dies ist das Taufbecken unserer Identität. This is the font of identity. Esta es la mesa de sustento. This is the table of sustenance. Es el libro de memoria y esperanza. This is the book of memory and hope. Bienvenidos, the children of God. Welcome home. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Even when we encounter folks who are mean, dishonest, hateful, 
We are called to respond with that love which is true and sincere. God calls us to love all people as if they were our own sisters and brothers. God seeks to weave us into one family, tearing down all the barriers between us. No matter how weary we become from our loneliness, our struggles, our service, God challenges us to be patient, to rejoice, and to never stop praying. Why should we do all these things? Because we are God's people, called to live lives which are different and which make a difference. Let us pray. Mwari wedu, musiki wedu, nyadenga wedu. Bless us with discomforted, easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships. Bless us with anger at injustice, oppression, and the exploitation of people. Bless us with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war. Bless us with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Great and holy God, we confess that oftentimes we miss the mark. We mess up. We fall short. We disappoint ourselves or others around us. Most of all, we have not done all that you would have us do. Therefore, we seek community that corrects and inspires us, for worship that lifts our spirits, for the urgent reminder of our grace that abounds in our lives, for the peace that enables us to embody your spirit of peace. In this time of worship, O living Lord, remake us. In this time of worship, O Holy Spirit, fill us up. Remind us of our calling. Grant us the courage to be your people through the risen Christ, the one who sets us free. who brought this world into being is the creator of community and the one who seeks to be in communion with all. By grace, we are drawn together as children of the creator. All persons welcome in the family of faith. Thanks be to God.
means you are invited to pass a sign of peace to those around you if you have folks as you're sheltered in place. If you're physically by yourself, I invite you to text or email or message a friend now to pass the peace of Christ to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. For those who are young or young at heart, I invite you to gather around closer as I share with you um, a book that I've shared before about bread, and it's simply titled Bread, Bread, Bread. Bread, bread, bread. Look at that yummy with peanut butter and jelly. And then a different kind of bread that she's eating and enjoying. People eat bread all over the world. There are many kinds, many shapes, many sizes. There's skinny bread and fat bread, round flat bread, bread with a hole. There's crunchy bread and lunchy bread and bread to soak up your egg. Pizza, pretzel, they're bread too, that counts. There is bread on the table and bread on your head. Bread is good for you. It helps you grow it makes you strong. There's making bread and shaping bread, baking bread, toasting bread. I like toasted bread. Cooking bread over the fire. Fill up the basket and off to the market. And bread for sale. Breaking bread together. Have a bite. Delicious. And so that's what we do today. We're gonna to break bread together later on in the worship service. And this Sunday is World Communion Sunday where we remember that the entire world, all of Christianity, all of those who celebrate Christianity, this is a Sunday where we remember that we all have something in common, that we are the body of Christ that we all participate in bread, even though we do so in different ways. And so we give thanks for bread. Would you join me in prayer? Gracious God, thank you for bread. Thank you for bread. Thank you. Thank you. For the things that make us the same. For the things that make us the same. And for the things that make us different. And for the things that make us different. Knowing that we all. Knowing that we all. Are children of God. Are children of God. Loved by you. Loved by you. And included. And included. In the body of Christ. In the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Friends, our scripture this morning, oh, I'm sorry, let us continue in prayer as we pray for an awareness of an inspiration from God's spirit. Let us pray. Holy God, word made flesh, 
let us come to this word open to being surprised. Silence our agendas, banish our assumptions, cast out casual detachment. Confound our expectations, clear the cobwebs from our ears, penetrate the corners of our hearts, and with this word, give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love, and strength and courage to follow on the path you set before us. In Jesus Christ, amen. Our scripture this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Galatians in the third chapter, verses 26 and 27. I'm sorry, 26 through 28. It may be familiar to some of you. Listen for a word from God. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer a Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Friends, we've been talking for the last several weeks about our vision and mission for Madison Square Presbyterian Church, and now we turn this week to talk about our values. As a Christian community, we are the body of Christ, and therefore our very being is centered in Christ. And our gathering together as a community of faith is scripturally based and theologically informed. But beyond our faith in God, our example in Jesus and the guidance by the Holy Spirit, our congregational values are the underlying ethic by which we define our community. Our congregational values are a way to explicitly name the things we hold most important as we consider what it means to be the body of Christ and how we behave and make decisions. Now, the values that we've articulated are both operative and aspirational. That is, already some of them are working in our community, and there are those things that we aspire to consistently embody. So today, I want to talk about our first value which is inclusive. And by that we say we are an open and wel- we are open and welcoming of all people, particularly to those on the margin or those otherwise excluded. The gospel challenges us to see all people, including those not like us or who do not hold similar values or understanding as our neighbor. In, a, in as much as possible, we are to love and welcome everyone. Now, the word inclusive seems like such a good word, and it is. It's warm, it's inviting, it seems nice, but it's something bigger, something more challenging. There are many different words and stories from Scripture that highlight God's inclusive love, but the reading from Galatians, I think, might be one of the shortest and most illustrative examples of just how radical God's inclusive love is. See, as a general rule, we we humans, we like order and structure, not just Presbyterians, but everybody. We like things to be in their place. We like to be able to label and sort and know the difference between us and them. We want to know the good and the bad. We want to know who's in and who's out. When Paul writes in Galatians that because because of Jesus, there is no longer Jew or Greek, slave or free, no longer male and female, this is a glimpse of the breadth and depth of God's love. It's not about dismissing difference, but it is about putting our self-worth in the correct place. It's not in our gender or our nationality or our orientation or status or any other label we might try to use to diminish the worth of someone, but rather it is the fact that we are all children of God and that we are all fearfully and wonderfully made. There is a rabbi who once said that when we look at humanity, all humanity, we should say, make way, make way for the image of God. 
the church today continues to struggle with who should belong, who's in and who's out, who exactly we want to know is made in the image of God. But scripture tells us that we're, we better be careful whenever we put limits on God's love. We better be careful about naming anyone unworthy or unclean. We need to be wary to declare someone is outside the bounds of God's love. When I think of the stories of Jesus' life and encounters with people, it is full of him reaching out to those who are excluded. He purposefully reached out to those who others wouldn't. People like the Samaritan woman at the well, people like lepers and the blind and the demon possessed and the woman caught in adultery. It seems to starkly contrast this idea that people first have to get it all right. Jesus talked to people others disregarded. He touched people he shouldn't have. He ate with all of the wrong people. He welcomed children, the least of these. Jesus demonstrates the love of God in love that is unconditional. He reflects what I think God calls the church into again and again, an ever-expanding circle that is transformed for the good as it welcomes more and more people, even the people we didn't think deserved it. And it isn't just Jesus that expands the circle of inclusive love. At the beginning of Acts, Jesus leaves his disciples with the charge to make disciples in Jerusalem, but not just Jerusalem, but Samaria and then to the ends of the earth to spread the good news in ever widening circles. The expansion of the church included a diversity of people, not just Jews, but also Gentiles. Philip encounters the Ethiopian eunuch and they sit and talk about scripture and what it is to follow God. Peter eats with Cornelius, someone he should have had no business of going into his house and because the food that was there was considered, according to Jewish laws, unclean. These are stories of people that one would not expect to be included in the faith community. They are outsiders. And, but the church is more inclusive than ever thought imaginable. There is a person uh, named David Hayward. He is a former pastor, and he left ministry to follow a different passion, another passion, which was to be an artist and a cartoonist. And he draws simple, usually one panel cartoons, but I found that they are deeply theological and they're profound and they demonstrate God's love well. And so I'd like to share with you just a few of is of my favorites of his to help you see what I see in terms of this understanding of God's radical and inclusive nature. And, and for those of you on the phone, I might try to describe some of them. So here's the first one, which is Jesus erasing the boundaries that we set up for others as people are drawing boxes and lines. Jesus is busy erasing those distinctions and lines. Here, Jesus, God is handing a flower with one petal. And, he, and God says, start with, he loves me. Jesus looks in the mirror and the image that Jesus sees back is the whole diversity of humanity. Here we see a rainbow sheep in amidst and inside of the church as Jesus stands amongst the other sheep. And one sheep says, sorry, but you're just not welcome here. And then Jesus walks out of the church building with the rainbow sheep. And the other sheep are left behind saying, hey, where did Jesus go? Here Jesus is holding a sheep that are in the flag of the transgender flag and the other sheep say, whoa, 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 hold it right there. He wasn't lost. We kicked him out. And Jesus says, I know. 
and I found her. Here Jesus eats with the black sheep amidst all the other white sheep. And finally is a panel with a tree and the moon. And it says, what got Jesus into the most trouble wasn't what he believed, but who he loved. Friends, it is today, Mark, seven years since I came to Madison Square. And within the first few weeks, I preached a sermon that talked about inclusion. And I told you that one of the reasons I was excited to be the pastor of Madison Square was because of our commitment to inclusivity. I wanted very much to be a part of a church that has a wide view and understanding of God's love. I told you then, and I still believe, that I want to be a part of a community that understands that to be Christian was to be about breaking boundaries, about crushing barriers that stand in the way. I want to be a part of a faith that calls me outside of myself and pushes me to examine my own prejudices and calls me to account. And that sometimes it might even compel me to break rules or norms or conventions because God calls us to break down barriers, to tear down dividing lines, to question the status quo and question our own prejudices and biases, not just for the sake of breaking rules or norms, but because there are times when God might be calling us to do just that, so that all may live more fully into the reality of God's impartiality. It's fabulous to know that we are created by God that we're called by God to be in service, to know that we are gifted and that we have to practice our faith and to care for one another. But mostly we can do all of that and still remain safe. But as that last slide showed, that last image showed, we're called beyond being safe. We're called outside of ourselves, outside of our preconceptions and our prejudices so that all may feel the wide welcome of God. We're called to get into trouble, just like Jesus did. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes that's scary. Because frankly, I'm quite happy to stay comfortable in my own world on most days with people that I know and who think and act just like me, perhaps even more so in this hyper-partisan, hyper-divided world. I'm content to not to have to face my own prejudices and hate. Most times I'm comfortable with not breaking rules and getting into trouble with my superiors or my congregation or my peers or my family. Sometimes it can be scary to rock the boats. However, and this is a big however, our God truly shows no partiality and our God is a God of reconciliation as we talked about last week. And we have been called into this ministry of reconciliation and not the safe kumbaya reconciliation, but the justice reconciliation, where all people are made in the image of God, where all people have worth, where all people have dignity, where there is no stranger, and we're called to action to help bring that into reality. And I imagine that many, if not most of you, feel in a similar way, that one main reason that you're part of this church is because we try our hardest to live into that reality every day an ever-expansive, open, welcome, inclusive, and diverse church. We believe that when God says that Jesus came into the world for the whole world, that God meant exactly that, for everyone, no exclusions. And I love being a part of a church and a faith that calls me outside of myself and pushes the church to examine its own prejudices and blind spots. That God calls us to break down barriers, tear down dividing lines, to question the status quo and question again our own prejudice, not just for the sake of breaking those rules. Again, I imagine for most of us, this is one of those things that we love about our faith and our church. But, and maybe some of you knew there was a but coming, but I wonder, before we get too complacent or self-congratulatory, I wonder what the Spirit might be doing with us. I wonder how we might get into more trouble 
how we're being challenged by our commitment to inclusivity. Inclusive, as I said, seems like such a nice word, but really it's a challenging word. Where are we falling behind? I wonder how the Spirit is calling us into a new understanding. I wonder to where and in what ways the Spirit is calling Madison Square to be even more radical in its understanding of God's inclusive and expansive love for all. As we look at the demographics of our church, do we really represent God's kingdom? Or is there more we can do to be more welcoming and inclusive? I believe the church should be a sign and foretaste of the kingdom of God, where there is reconciliation and new community where all are valued for the people who God made them to be. I believe in being fully inclusive. And at the same time, I wonder what boundaries do we need to erase? What persons do we need to welcome to the table? Or better yet, whose table do we need to go and sit at? What trouble do we still need to get in? Amen. We will in just a moment have a song uh, and during this song, you can prepare your elements for communion. You can send prayer requests to Pastor Jen. You can put them in the chat in Zoom or in the comments on Facebook or text her. Um, this is also a time when you can give of your offerings if you choose to do so or able to do so. And so let us prepare for partaking in world communion for preparing our hearts and minds to give of our offerings and our prayers. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my home, the country.
Again, friends, we will join together in communion on this World Communion Sunday. Um, you will see, again, different elements of communion from our partners across the globe. And so I invite you into this time of communion with Madison Square and with the world. Nyanya Turaikuna, Señor Parsenan Mancaya y Cusunchis, Cusisca Causasunchis. Esta é a mesa para a qual Jesus nos convida. Vamos participar com alegria. Talanta Mesha, Cristo Te Yigot. Coa Jesus Mesa. Ha e Nyanya Nenu Hendabe. Nenu Murumina, Bui Abe Hendibe. Esta é a mesa a la que Jesus nos invita. Participemos de ella con alegría. Let us prepare, let us pray the great thanksgiving, embracing God. We give thanks for being brought together by your spirit. In your presence, we come to know the true depths of your love for us, and it is good. In your presence, our eyes are opened and we see the best of your creation and it is good. In your presence, the fullness of grace teaches us to love one another as you love us, and that is good. We come together at our various tables to remember this sacrament. Creator God, we are amazed at your holy and diverse creation. You made us in your image and offered us every good gift in the garden, yet we took for ourselves forbidden fruit, thinking we could be like you. In so doing, we rejected your intended diversity for us, a human sin that we still can't shake. Prophets came through the ages to help us mend our ways. And still we fought and tried to conquer others to make all manner of nations live like one another. Jesus came and finally showed us how to truly love. He sat with sinners and tax collectors. He touched diseased bodies with gentleness. He lifted others from their deathbed and even with his dying breath promised rest to a thief on the cross. Gracious God, you gave us your son. He died and rose again on the third day so that we might have everlasting life. And so with ancestors and on this World Communion Sunday, your people cry out, holy, 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 Lord of God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The grains have been harvested and the bread has been baked. The grapes have been collected from the vine and the juice has been pressed. They come together on our tables for a holy purpose. Holy Spirit, come breathe your blessing on the elements of bread and juice and bring us to our tables with Christ for the table will be wide, and the welcome will be wide, and the arms will open wide to gather us in, and our hearts will open wide to receive, and we will come as children who trust that there is enough, and we will come unhindered and free, and our aching will be met with bread, and our sorrow will be met with wine, and we will open our hands to the feast without shame. We will turn toward each other without fear, and we will give up our appetite for despair. And we will taste and know of delight. And we'll become bread for a hungering world. And we will become drink for those who thirst. And the blessed will become the blessing. And everywhere there will be a feast. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered in a room with an upper room with his disciples and took the bread and gave thanks and broke it saying this is my body broken for you and in a similar manner Jesus took the cup and he poured it out saying this is the cup of the new covenant shed in my blood sealed and my blood shed for you Whenever you drink of this cup, do this in remembrance of me.
damos gracias por este pan, fruto de la tierra, del trabajo, regalo de la gracia de Dios. Lo partimos y lo compartimos, haciendo memoria de las palabras y las acciones, los gestos, las miradas, los silencios y la vida entregada del Maestro de Nazaret. Take and eat. Y damos gracias por el fruto de la vida, por la alegría de la comunión, por las alianzas que perduran en la búsqueda de la justicia y plenitud. Tomamos de la copa sintiéndonos parte de ese pueblo comunidad que renueva su pacto por la vida. The cup of grace. Drink from it. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. God, your bread and your cup fill us with grace for the journeys we are on. Your bread is like manna, given freely, always enough for everyone, filling enough for wilderness wandering. Your cup is like an ever-flowing stream, a spring of living water that quenches thirst and is pure and clean. We need this grace to abide with us, not just in this moment of worship, connected as we are over the internet and phone and the very world, lifting the elements as one body of Christ, but throughout the days and weeks until we eat together again. Thank you for this sacrament. Nadia Bowles Weber prayed the other day, I don't think you created us to be able to metabolize such a constant stream of bad news every day, Lord but I do know that you created us to metabolize cookies and communion bread and juice. And for that, we give you thanks and praise. They are helping. Thank you for always being present in ordinary elements. Thank you for being present in our homes and at whatever functions as our table of sustenance. Thank you for the technology that connects us and the faithfulness that we show to one another as we continue to remain scattered in our worship. We pray that you would show up right now. And if you already are, we pray for new eyes to notice you. And thank you for hearing these prayers from among our congregation. We pray for our president and first lady and the other 34.8 million people who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 for the doctors, nurses, techs, and support staff who care for the sick, for first responders who run toward every need, for an individual who has had a hard time and is seeing the way out now, we pray for continued hope and good days. We celebrate with our own Major Paul Barbo and Mrs. Kim DeBarge who are celebrating having accomplished their wedding vows yesterday in a small family ceremony. We pray for students, teachers, and staff continuing to navigate the challenges of this school year. We celebrate the birthday of Pastor Mary Ellis at our sister church in Placetas, Cuba. We pray in thanks for blessings. We pray for Lynette, the Beck King's children's great grandmother having cataract surgery on both eyes, first one this week and then next week. We pray for an upcoming doctor's appointment and for healing for all who are ill and in pain. We pray continued prayers for Emile's full recovery. 
We pray for Micah on both the joy of his birthday tomorrow and the anniversary of his mother's death also tomorrow. For Allison's father, Joe, as he battles pancreatic cancer. For wisdom, rest, and peace for the Tyler family. We celebrate Pastor Bart's seventh anniversary with us for the ways both he and our church have grown and are challenging each other. We pray for those who feel compelled to love and get into good trouble and who strive to be the hands and the heart of Christ every day, even when it is scary or dangerous. And we pray for our local, state, and national government leadership. All these prayers we lift together, and the ones that we lift privately, we trust are already known to you. We take comfort in praying for one another. We want to reach out and hold hands with the ones we sat next to in the pews and give those hands a squeeze at the final amen. We want to hug the, one who need, the ones who need hugs. We want to hug everyone who's willing to be hugged and stick around for an extra half hour after the benediction, looking our church family in our watery, happy eyes and pass around the babies for kissing and tickling. But we don't want to pass around the virus. So keep us persistent and patient and comfort the pain we feel in being apart. We pray all this in the name of your son, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I invite you to join me in the benediction. As people who have been fed, go now to feed the world. As those who have been given hope, bring hope in places of despair. May God help us to do so. And always remember that we are never cut off from the source, the bread of life. The true vine is with us always. And so we always share in hope's banquet. Thanks be to the one who hosts the banquet. Amen and amen. Friends, God is for you. Go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs>